Hey, Brock Lemire is here. In this video, we're going to look at functions to operate on strings from the string H header file. Okay, there is a header file that is very, very useful when you use strings, and it's called string.h. <clears throat> okay, there are many functions in here, uh, but we'll get, we're gonna look at four of them, which are kind of the most common that I use. Uh, string length, string copy, string compare, and string cat. Uh, and then there's additional functions in here that are really useful uh, that once you know how to use, like you've seen four of them in action, the rest of them are like, okay, okay, I got, uh, I understand what the, what the rest of these are. So string toke is really useful. It splits a string into tokens based upon a delimiter. So if you had like Brock space J space Lemire's, you could say, hey, use space as a delimiter and you could break that into three tokens. We're gonna do a lot of that when we do file input. Uh, you can do scanning of the string to look for stuff. You can concatenate parts of a string to another one. You can compare parts of a string to another one. You can copy part of a string and you can look at scanning stuff. So these really have to do with breaking the string apart and looking at portions of it. But the ones we'll start with are just general operations on a full blown string. Okay, so let's just start right in. Let's just start coding. So let's go to mod 10 code along and I'm gonna vim up a little bit of uh, action strings too. So I'm gonna go vim strings do dot c and now I'm ready for some uh, action here. So I'm gonna go lang with string dot h. Okay, uh, and here we go. So I'm gonna do pound include. Don't get your pound sign. So pound include uh, standard io dot h of course for printf, and then we're gonna go pound include and then we're going to bring in string.h now string.h is good because you don't have to do any linker commands so this one will just compile with gcc just like standard io does okay now let's make our main function here uh open curly come on down return uh close curly and we're off and running come on up here and let's get a little string going so let's do a string called string one and let's go ahead and make it 50 elements big so big dog and then let's say uh, let's go ahead and put hello world okay so hello world okay all right so we're sitting here let's print the thing out to begin with and then we'll play around so let's print f we're going to use the format specifier format uh specifier for uh, a string which is percent s and that will print everything up until it sees the null character and then we'll do a line return and then let's go ahead and put string one in there. Notice we don't put any square brackets because string one is a pointer to the first location in the string. Okay. <laughs> Life is good. All right. So here we go. I'm going to do this and I'll go ahead and say, I'm going to got to go into uh, mod 10 code along and then let me LS it and then we'll go GCC string uh, two and we'll direct the output to strings two and good and then we'll go strings to hello world all right we haven't even done anything yet uh <laughs> so now let's look at the first uh let's let's look at the first function here so string length returns the integer number of characters present not including the null so remember that when this puts it on here it's gonna be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so 12 is the answer if you include the null, right? But if you don't want the null, uh, it'll return it without it, okay? So let's let's do this, watch this. I'm just gonna go uh, print F and I'm gonna say string one length, length equals, and it's gonna be an integer value, okay? And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna say return str len and then string one and then close it okay and it's going to print 11. okay and that's because even though there was uh there was a null in there it basically goes until it sees the null backs off one and you're off and running okay you know what's interesting about this is let's do this watch watch if i did size of so what if i came in here and i said i want to do the standard size of that what do you think that would return run it 50 so 
not super interesting in this example because we we essentially <laughs> initialize this to 50. <laughs> but here's here's an, an interesting example. Let's say that I didn't initialize this to 50 and I allowed the initialization of it to take care of how big the string was going to be. Watch this. Let me GCC this. Let me let me GCC it again, clear it again, and then we'll run it. What do you think's happening here? Oh, look at this. So size of was hello world and the null, whereas string length gave hello world no null. So very simple, but man, it is a useful thing. All right, string compare. Now you might have a little experience with this from your one of your homework assignments, okay? When you, when you try to compare two strings, the only way to do it without this function is to compare each element, each character to each character in the second string, okay? And so the problem is that when you try to like say, okay, is is string one equal to string two? The string one and string two is, are pointers. So they're basically pointing to the first location in the array. So you can't, you could only ever compare the first character of the array to each other using a standard compare. And so what this does is it will actually go in and it'll walk through the entire string and make sure that it's okay now, or make sure it matches. So the way it works is it compares the two, okay? It compares the two strings. And if you want one to not be a pointer, you want it to be like a hard-coded value, you can certainly put it in, uh, double quotes. So in this situation, I can, I'm going to read in something from the, the user and then I'll compare it and say, did you say type CSCI? Okay. The way that it returns is it actually returns a number. So if they're equal, it returns zero. Uh, it returns a negative number if A is less than B, where A is string one and B is string two. And then it's greater if A is greater than B. Now you must be going, what, what is greater than a less than with a string? Well, it's called the lex lexicographical order. That's alphabetical, okay? So that's where A, B, C, you could say that A is less than B, B is less than C, and then just like the number symbols, zero is less than one. Uh, and then at the same time, it's almost, it's like, lowercase a is less than a. So it's basically just put in an alphabetical order the way we learned when we were children. <laughs> so let's do it. All right, so we're gonna car here. We're gonna go string two, and let's go ahead and just make it a small little fella. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use f gets and grab some information. So I'm gonna say printf, and I'm gonna say enter your name. And, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what? Go ahead and get it with f gets. All right, and I'll do string two, and then I'm gonna use the size of string two, because that's usually how you use f gets. Read it in from the standard in, which means the keyboard. And now I'm gonna compare it. So here's what the function is. It's gonna be string compare, and I'm gonna say string two, and I'm gonna compare it to CSCI line return. Because remember, f gets is going to grab the line return and stick it in there. So this is going to return a number. So I can't just like call it. It has to return something, but I can use it in an if statement if I want. So watch this. I can say if, and then I can say if this thing is equal to zero, okay, that meant the person entered CSCI. So let's go ahead and open a curly and say print f, and then we'll just go, hello, CSCI. And then that's it. And then otherwise, go ahead and close my curly. And then we'll go up here and we'll say uh, else, open curly, we'll print F, I don't know you. Dot, dot, dot. All right. Close up that else. And got a rando one down there. And we got her. Okay, so let's see what this does. Okay, so keep that over there. Keep the code on top. I'm going to stretch this over a little bit. I'm going to say, all right, go ahead and GCC it. Go ahead and run it. All right, enter your name. I'm going to go, my name is Brock. I don't know you. <laughs> that was not equal to CSCI. All right, let's do it again. So I do that. I'm like, CSCI? Hello, CSCI. Okay, so very, very simple. But if you're using F gets right before it, you got to remember that old return, that line returns in there, okay? String copy. Here is... There, there's an interesting issue when you use strings here. Okay, so let me, let me come down here and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go, uh, 
let's let's just do a divider here. So string copy. Okay, so let's just say I did this car and I call it string three. Uh, and I made a 10 and I said, let's initialize it with, hey there, okay? No problem, no problem at all, okay? So I can compile that and I can print it if I want, okay? So I can do this, I can go, uh, not run it, I'm gonna control C, clear, start over, GCC, life is good. However, if I did this, let me comment that out, and I said, uh, car string three, 10 and then i said string three equals hey there this will air out okay so this this doesn't like it and it's like what in, what in the world assignment to expression with array type well it has to do with pointers right so this is a pointer and you're trying to write something, you're trying to assign something to it that is not a pointer. This is a string of characters. So this is really only allowed assigning to this when you initialize it because you're defining this then as a pointer, okay? So this is not allowed. You can't assign to string three like you think you can. So that's what string copy is. So string copy is how you basically copy information from one array into the string three array. So what I would do here is I come up here and I just go string copy. And what I do is the first argument is where the stuff's going. And then I can basically, uh, I can basically then copy it in there. So let's, let's just do it like this where uh, I'm going to go string copy and then I'll say I'll go, hey, there. And now it's like, okay, now print F, uh, S, format specifier is S. And then, nope, oh, don't core dump that. So then <laughs> string three. All right, so then now I got it in there. Let's make sure that works. Clear this up, clear this up. Uh, GCC, run it. Hey there, okay? So it's a really simple, right? It's really simple, but it's just, it's how you put information into a string after it's already been declared, okay? And and it's it's pretty simple, but it's just kind of a, a real something that's annoying after a while. String cat, cat stands for concatenation, okay? And it's combining two things, okay? So let me do this. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go st uh, string cat, cat. So let's check this out. This it's very simple. It just basically combines two uh, two strings. So I'm going to make a string. I'll call name one, and I will call it uh, give it ten characters, and then we'll say rock space. And you'll see I'm going to concatenate them together with my last name, which will be name two, and I'll do ten characters, and I'll say equals, and I'll say Lemire's. Okay. So when I concatenate those together, I want a space between them. I could, I mean, I'll show you how to do it other ways, but print F. Okay, so let's print my name one to begin with. Okay, so I'm gonna go percent S and then return, and then I'll put in percent S that format specifier, name one. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do that. It should just print back, uh, run it, CSCI. There it is, Brock. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's do this. I'm gonna concatenate it. I'm gonna go string cat and then i'm going to go hey take name one go ahead and concatenate name two with it and now what i'll do is i'll print f and then i'll do uh name one again name one and now name one is going to have my last name on it so i go boom boom gcc and i run it and then csci Buckle mirrors. <laughs> okay cool 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 uh you could also concatenate uh, you could also do this, like if I didn't have that, I'd be like, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna do uh, string cat name one and do it that way. So then you could actually concatenate a couple times Ruffle mirrors. <clears throat> okay, so you can concatenate fixed variables in there too, fixed information. Okay, now there's two things that are really handy with fgets. And that is two conversion functions that they're not in string.h, they're in standard lib, 
Okay, so they're actually in a different header file. So instead of being string, it's standard lib. Don't ask me why they're in this one, but they are ATOI and ATOF. Okay, I'm gonna come up here and this is driving me nuts. This string, uh, this F gets thing. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to be like, okay, ATOF stands for ASCII to integer. The issue with FGETs is that when you read it in, it reads it as a string. So if you entered like a number, it's going to be like, oh, uh, that's the ASCII code for that number. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense when you try to like add things together because the symbol for zero is not hex zero okay it's something else and so it you want to convert that into the actual hex zero here so here's what i'm going to do let's let's do this really quick and then we'll call it a vid call it a video here so this is a t o i ascii to integer and so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to do this car and i'm going to make a string age and it's going to be string Okay, make it five characters wide, and then I'll make an int, and I'll make this age uh, int, and that's it. And then I'm gonna do this printf, and I'm gonna say, hey, enter your age. And then be like, okay. And I'm gonna say f gets, and I'm gonna get, <laughs> put it into a string, because you f gets puts it into a string. And then I'll do size of h uh, string, and then I'll say standard in. Read it from the keyboard. Okay. And then I'm going to do this. Age int equals, and I'm going to use this function called A-T-O-I, ASCII to integer, and I'm going to convert the string to an integer. And then I can just do this. Print F, and I can say U, U, R, and now I can use the format specifier for an integer, years old, and now age int i have what i entered as an integer data type okay so let me gcc that we'll run it and it's like, enter your age 22. you are 22 years old <laughs> now what's cool about it is that now you can add to it okay you can add and everything will work the way you think it will because 22 is actually coded as hex 22. okay all right life is good if the conversion can't be performed uh like a like you give it some wacky string that can't convert into an integer, then what'll happen, like, like if you gave it a question mark, right? It'll be like, what, what's a question mark? It'll return zero, okay? And it'll just tell you, you screwed up. ATOF is also pretty good because you could do the exact same thing, but you could bring it in as, uh, you, you just convert a string to a float. So it's ATOF. So let's do this one. Car string, uh, age string, let's go uh, float. And then let's go enter your age, and I'm gonna bring it in as a string, bring it in as a string, and then I'm gonna convert it this time to, uh, let me change this variable float. Let's come down here, and now I'm gonna put it here, float, and then I'm gonna use ASCII to float, and then I'm gonna come down here and be like, float, <laughs> and then over here, I'll make this float. Probably gonna type that whole thing over quicker than that. Uh, G sit, now I'm like strings, enter age 22.2, and it got it. <laughs> Life is good. All right, that those are the most common functions from string.h and a couple really powerful ones from uh, standard lib. But that is, once you know those, you can start learning the rest of them in the library and it's very powerful. So that's it, see ya.